Hello, Brooke. Today, I want to ask you, how do social anxiety manifest for us ADHDers and what are some tools you can give us to treat it? Yeah, many of us ADHDers do experience social anxiety uh, for many different reasons. It is very often a coexisting condition. Um, in childhood, the ADHDer can be bullied, they can be rejected, they can be loud, have difficulty taking turns, possibly boss other children around, uh, be, me, be a little bit more inattentive or hyperactive or aggressive or miss social cues. So that right there can then lean to future uh, social anxiety based on the worries that people won't like them or they're going to be made fun of. Uh, or they won't be accepted. So that happens with ADHD years. I experienced it myself growing up. And um, what social anxiety is, is this excessive stress over future thoughts and situations. For example, potential humiliation, rejection, negative judgment in social situations. So those things that I just mentioned. Um, so that can manifest into um, not going to a social event, eating in a different room than someone else, um, just avoidance. And that anxiety can then turn into depression mm -hmm. because you're isolating yourself. Uh, it could also result in panic attacks. So Dr. Sharon Saline, who's a friend of mine, I like her very much and respect her. She talks about social anxiety and she says it can leave us feeling conscious, exhausted, or like an outcast. And untreated anxiety combined with isolation and self-esteem can quickly lead to depression. Mm -hmm. So some ways to treat the social anxiety, of course, um, you know, you can see a psychologist, do some talk therapy, do CBT to train your brain to think differently. Some coaching actually can help with that, but also just some practical tools like taking small steps. If you are worried about being in a group of people, do one-on-one -on -one with someone first, whether it be from work or a social group, and then transition into a bigger group afterwards. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, remember that most people are thinking about themselves and very often self-conscious. So if, if you can think that, okay, no one's paying attention to me, I'm not you know, the center of their attention and the center of my own attention and everyone else is thinking about themselves, it might alleviate some of that pressure as well. And then um, support groups too are really helpful when you see that other people are feeling the same way that you are and you talk that out. And finally, you know, positive affirmations and reframing those negative thoughts into positive thoughts and different actions and behaviors. Yes. The positive thoughts. I like that a lot. Social anxiety. I've, I've moved from here at age 10 to Lebanon, other side of the world, um, from at, during at age 10. And I also moved at age 15 from Lebanon back over here. So I've, I've, um, experienced a shift in culture twice in my life, major, major shift. And, um, I've come to, uh, a big, big speed bump and social anxiety was one of the, uh, one of the issues I was dealing with. Um, I, the, the tool that I want to give everybody is, is what I've learned along the way is mindset. You need to understand that we all have different brains. I, I always like reminding myself that we're all humans. We all have flaws. We all have stresses. We all make mistakes. We all worry. Um, and we, a lot of us, um, you know, and to keep it real with you, I think it, you always want to try and remind yourself that it's the, that's the best part about being human. Um, and uh, even when you doubt that it is, always try to remind yourself that's what makes us human. It what, it's what brings us together, embracing that we're all in this together. And it's our jobs as human to keep us all together and stay positive, socialize, enforce one another and stick with each other with our flaws. That has always helped me. You know, sometimes I, I have issues, um, uh, social anxiety, and I'm like, you know, I'm just kind of a little nervous and I walk away. I say something I didn't want to say and I'm like, darn it, why did I say that? Or I could handle that better. My anxiety got to me. But then I remind myself we're all humans. We all make mistakes. This is a chance for me to grow 
and move on. And at the end of the day, we, we, we all have our own flaws. Sticking around people, like you said, support groups that, tr- that, that you can build trust with. People that uh, uh, um, relate with you with social anxiety and uh, ADHD and, and, and any, anything in general is super important because you're building trust. Yes. Um, you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And as a child, it's really hard because we're egocentric as a child to understand um, that people that we associate ourselves with might not be the right people. And once you get older, I'm 37 now, I continue to understand who are the right people for me based on my values and who lifts me up. And, um, you know, rather than being with someone who puts me down, which then can create that social anxiety again. So I, I think that's huge. Yes. And I think for, for someone to figure that out and develop that, develop that, you know, oh, I, I know I can trust this person now. I've gone through, uh, you know, I, I've realized who's right and who's wrong. Um, it's challenging yourself. You know, take, take risks, go to different surroundings, different workplaces, different jobs. Um, and, you know, just throw yourself in there in, the, in that social setting. Um, you know, I, when, I, when I got my job as a server, I trained for three days and that's usually how everybody trains. And I was the youngest server at the restaurant I worked at. I made a mistake with my first table and it was really bad. And I just froze up. They call, asked for the manager and it wasn't good. I talked to my manager. I was like, listen, I can do better. I challenged myself. I didn't want to say that. I want to tell him I don't want to be a server. This is not, not for me. This was back when I was 17 years old. This is not for me. And um, uh, I, I, I challenged myself. I said, no. I know I can fix this. They gave me three more training days. And listen, next time I figured out how to do better in that specific situation. There's other situations that are tough, but that growth in that certain situation will help you in other situations. Yes. Um, I love that. That's like exposure therapy. So you are conquering some of your fears. You of course were worried, but you stepped out of your comfort zone and you tried it again. And, and I knew at the workplace, because I had some of my coworkers, I was a busboy there for um, almost a year. I knew who I could trust. So I would go and vent to some of my coworkers, you know, I tell them, hey, this happened to me, you know, and they, they uplifted my energy. So they talked to me, hey, it's okay. These things happen, happen to me. So having that person who reminds you it's normal, it's happened to me too, is awesome. Someone that makes you feel positive and, um, you know, one, one more really important thing I want to bring up, you know, surroundings are key. Mindset is key. And I think trying to increase your self-confidence, and I bring this up so much, working out and staying healthy. I think it has helped me very big time in, in the past. Working out and staying healthy helps you boost your self-confidence. Um, it, it's an anxiety reliever. It's a stress reliever. And you get to walk out of there feeling great. Oh, um, I'm, I'm working towards a goal, whether it's getting skinny whether it's um, gaining weight, muscle, whether it's this, whether it's that, whether it's just being healthy in general, just staying healthy and having a great diet. I think that boosts your confidence just yeah. with your, within yourself. Yeah. Um, watching the types of like eating for your body, right? So, and stimulating um, the, you know, health, like that whole gut mind connection and mindfulness to deep breaths. Very often we forget to breathe. I know the Apple watch, you know, reminds you to breathe, but Dr. Daniel Amen just talks about like laying on your back and holding your stomach and taking really deep belly breaths and breathing in and breathing out. And that can alleviate some anxiety as well. hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, those moments where you kind of freeze up and you're like, Oh no, this is not good. Um, it happens moments where you don't even freeze up. You just don't want to get out of your comfort zone and talk to someone. Take a deep breath. Talk to that person that matters. Or remind yourself we're all human. Um, Another cool trick from Stephen Kotler that I teach my clients is when you're anxious going into a social situation, whether it be at work or uh, friends, you can say before you go in, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I might've mentioned it before because anxiety and excitement are so close in feelings that it can translate to excitement by saying that three times. 
Yeah. Manifestation. You got to manifest it. You know, you got to throw it into the world. Write it down. Remind yourself you're excited. And um, that's that's mindset too. I, I love that 100%.